Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn about unique local and link local IPv6 addresses. We'll start off with unique local. Those are similar to IPv4 RFC 1918 private addresses. So 10.x.x.x, 172.16 to 172.31.x.x, and 192.168.x.x, the private addresses. They are not publicly reachable. They are assigned from the range FC00, double colon, slash 7, and as always, hosts should be assigned slash 64 addresses. So that's it for our unique local addresses. Not so much to tell you about them. They're pretty simple. There's more to tell you about the link local addresses. So the link local addresses are valid for communications on their particular link only. They cannot send traffic out to another link. They're assigned from the range FE80, double colon, 10, to FEB0, double colon, slash 10. And again, as always, hosts should be assigned slash 64 addresses. So that might seem a bit confusing for now. So let's have a look and see what we mean by link local and not being able to send traffic off their own link. In the example here in the diagram, we've got routers A, B, and C, and they're all connected to the same network segment through the switch on the left. On that segment, router A has been assigned IP address FE80 double colon one slash 64 is its link local address on that interface. Router B is FE80 double colon two, and router C is FE80 double colon three. There's also another link here as well, which is going between B and D. B and D have also got link local addresses on that link. B is FE80 double colon four, and D is FE80 double colon five. Now, because these are link local addresses, FE80 double colon one, FE80 double colon two, and FE80 double colon three on that link between routers A, B, and C, they can communicate with each other. And FE80 double colon four and FE80 double colon five on the link between routers B and D, they can communicate with each other as well. But FE80 double colon one, double colon two and double colon three do not have any connectivity to FE80 double colon four or FE80 double colon five. So link local addresses, you can send and receive traffic from them, but it's only valid on that local link. It will not get routed out another interface on the other side of a router. So you're maybe thinking, well, why am I ever going to use link local addresses if you can only send traffic on their local link? They can be used for communications, which should not be forwarded beyond the local link, like routing protocol, hello packets, and updates. And the link local addresses are mandatory on your Cisco router interfaces if IPv6 is enabled on them. So they're mandatory and the link local addresses are automatically generated with EUI64 addresses whenever you enable IPv6 on an interface. But that automatically generated EU6, EUI64 address can be overridden by manually configuring a link local address on there. So let's see how this works. The example here, we've got a new router which has got no IPv6 configuration yet. So we do our show IPv6 interface brief and we see that we've got no addresses. We then configure our global unicast addresses on this router. So first up, IPv6 unicast routing to enable IPv6 routing on the router. Then on interface fast 0 slash 0, we say IPv6 address 2001 
db8 zero one double colon one so that's a global unicast address and we've also put a global unicast address on interface fast two slash zero if we then do a show ipv6 interface brief i can see on fast zero slash zero i've got that global unicast address that i just configured 2001 db8 zero one double colon one and the router has also automatically generated a link local address on that interface as well. It's given it the IPv6 link local address, FE80, double colon, C801, 2FFF, FE24, colon, zero. And also on interface fast 2 slash zero, because we configured a global unicast address on there, the router has also automatically configured a link local address on there. You can easily see which are the link local addresses because they begin with FE80. Notice on interface fast 1 slash 0 and 3 slash 0, there is no link local address on there because IPv6 was not enabled on those interfaces yet. The link local addresses are valid only on the local link as we covered before. So you can use the same address on multiple interfaces. Because it's unique to the, at the interface level, it doesn't can create a conflict if you use the same address on a different interface. So you can see that here on R1, we've got IPv6 address, FE80 double colon one link local on fast 00, zero and we've also configured it on fast two slash zero as well. You can also see here how to configure the link local address manually. If you do this, it will override having the EUI64 address. So this can be useful if you want to have a more logical fixed link local address on your router. Now, let's talk about multiple addresses on our interfaces. It's different in IPv4 than it is in IPv6. You see in our example here, we've gone on to R1, and on interface fast 0 slash 0, I've said IP address 10.10.10.1, it's a slash 24. And then I hit enter, and then I configure IP address 192.168.10.1 slash 24. Well, if you now do a show run, you can see that the IP address on the interface is 192.168.10.1. When we entered the second IP address, it wrote over the first IP address. So if you configure multiple IPv4 address commands on a, a router, IPv4, it's the latest one that will take effect. The older ones will be removed. If you do want to have multiple IPv4 addresses on an interface on a router, the way you do that is you can see down at the bottom, interface fast 0 slash 0, IP address 172.16.0.1 slash 24, and then I use the secondary keyword. That will allow you to have two IPv4 addresses on an interface but the maximum that you can have is two. If you do configure this, then you see the example here, we've got IP address 192.168.10.1 is the primary and 172.16.0.1 is the secondary. Whenever you send traffic from the router itself and it's sourced from that interface, it will use the primary IP address. It's not normal to configure secondary IPv4 addresses. This is very rarely done. Okay, so that's how it works in IPv4. You can have a maximum of two IP addresses on an interface, and to do that, you have to use the secondary keyword. It's different in IPv6. In IPv6, you can have multiple IPv6 addresses on the same interface on a router, and it's quite happy for you to do that. So you see the example here, we've got an interface fast zero slash zero, I've got IPv6 address FE80, double colon one, and I say that's the link local address. Then IPv6 address 2001, DB8, zero, zero, double colon one. And IPv6 address 2001, DB8, zero, one, double colon one. And if this was an IPv4, the second one would have overwritten the first one. But in IPv6, we do a show run interface fast zero slash zero, 
and I can see that all of my IP addresses are on there. So I've got IPv6 address, FE80, double colon one, link local. And I've also got the 2001 DB8 double colon one and the 2001 DB8 zero one double colon one. So you can see it will take multiple IP addresses. You can also see from the example here as well that on that same interface, I've also got my IPv4 addresses on there too. So that will work just fine. This is a dual stack router, meaning that it's running both IPv4 and IPv6. If a packet comes into the router, which has got an IPv4 destination address, it will use its IPv4 routing. If a packet comes in with an IPv6 destination address, then it will use its IPv6 routing. Whether it's going to be IPv4 or IPv6 depends on the application on the end host that's sending traffic through the router. Okay, so to summarize our multiple IPv6 addresses, link local addresses are mandatory on IPv6 enabled interfaces. Global unicast and unique local addresses are optional. You can have multiple addresses on the same interface and one link local address for routing protocol traffic and one global unicast address for normal routing is typical on your routers. Okay. So that was our other types of addresses. In the next lecture, we'll take a look at this with a lab demo. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.